took a while to get the engine going, but we're moving. We're moving. And of course, now it starts to rain. <laughs> the engine blew. We're stuck. <laughs> Last word. So it's currently 4.39 in the morning. Sambu picked me up at my hotel. He said he would be there at 4.30. He was there at 4.30. That was great. We're on the tuk-tuk to buy tickets to Angkor Wat. So I read about this online. I'm not the only one here. You have to buy your ticket first from the Angkor Archaeological Center only on the day that you go. If you buy it after 5 p.m., I think they close at 5.30, it's for the next day. So there are a bunch of other people here. You buy your ticket and then you go to Angkor Wat and the tuk-tuk driver, all the drivers, they know to take you here first. So very, very efficient system. And there are lines. So I got here at like 5.20 in the morning and I was on the other side, the left bank in front of the main Angkor Wat temple and as you can see, very cloudy day, so the sun kind of came up blue. Um, I would say a little disappointing as far as the sunrise goes, it's still really pretty but uh, just not being able to see it with all the colors, the lights and stuff, like the photos was a little disappointing but overall still, still really nice. So I'm gonna go explore the temple now. There it is, Chicos. It's 7.06 in the morning. I just walked around the main temple of Angkor Wat for about an hour. So overall, really beautiful, very cool. Um, I bought a three-day ticket for 62 US dollars. And yeah, I'll be back here tomorrow and probably one more day before I leave Cambodia. So I think this is the oldest one I've been to this is Takeo, that just said 10th century. And so if this was built in the 10th century, that means it's at least 1,000 years old, which is just incredible. So now I'm in Tapron, which according to the sign was built in the late 12th century. And as you can see behind me, this one is interesting because it has trees growing out of the ruins. So I'm taking a tour of the floating village of Tonle Sap, which as you can see, there's nothing floating about it right now. It is dry season as I'm here in Cambodia, so. Man. The tour guide said that about 700 families live here and there are two levels. So the water gets seven to 10 meters high in the wet season. Yes. I'm interrupting your travels. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We're just in the middle of the Yeah. Speak English. Okay. Hey guys. What's up? I'm good. How are you? Oh, this is cool. Where is your name? My name's Steven. What's your, yeah, what's your name? My name is Hannah. Hannah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm a teacher. Yeah. Yeah, I teach children. Do you guys learn a lot? Yeah? Yeah. 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 Very impressive. How old are you? I'm 11 years old. You're 11. Yeah. You're 11. And there can be anywhere between 5 and 12 people living in each house. And once a child gets married, then they can build their own house. But no other Cambodian person or foreigner can build a house here. This is actually very different from the floating village of Uros that Nick and I saw last summer. Uh, on Lake Titicaca in Peru. He's trying to catch catfish. Oh, that one. Floating restaurant of Tonle Sap. 